What up, YouTube fans? This is Zuby Masters returning to my Let's Play of E3 Healing Harmony. murdered in the empty room, and then moved to the lab? Then how do you explain the large amount of blood in the lab? It may be possible to carry a body, but blood cannot be moved. I think she was still alive after the attack in the empty room. She was killed after she was carried to her lab. This is it! The fatal wound was a cut to the back of her neck from a katana. But she also showed signs of blunt force trauma, and I think I know why. After Angie was not unconscious in the empty room, she was killed in her lab. I see! So that puddle of blood is from the killing room! It's all clear now! Angie was attacked in the empty room, carried to her lab. Clear at all. It's full of doubts, of mysteries, of a dense, impenetrable fog! Nothing is clear at all!
Genji was attacked in the empty room first. And then carried into the research lab? Impossible! Impossible! That's nothing but a delusion! You would tend to poison our minds with your delusions? It's no delusion. Angie's two external wounds tell the story. After she was struck in the empty room, she was carried to the art research lab and then killed. You say the culprit carried Angie's body? And not a single drop of blood fell? The hallway and empty room had no blood stain. Oh no! You say the culprit carried Angie's body? And not a single drop of blood fell? The hallway and empty room had no blood stain. Even if you wipe them down later, there'd still be traces of evidence left behind. But there was no evidence anywhere, was there, Suichi? I'll cut through your words. There was evidence left at the scene. The bloody tape under Angie's body. What? It was wrapped around her head to stop the bleeding while she was being carried. Bloody tape? Don't I didn't notice at all? It was under the body. It's most likely evidence the culprit should have gotten rid of. But since it was hidden, the culprit didn't notice and failed to dispose of it. It must have fallen as the fatal blow was dealt and ended up under her body. Must have been Atua who did that for us. What? Atua? How long are you going to keep that up? Now we know most of the mystery behind Angie's murder. I'm convinced there's only one person who could have killed Angie. It has to be you! You killed Angie. someone with a seesaw trade. But while he was making preparations in the empty room, Angie walked in. So he decided to kill her in order to keep her from talking. She just happened to walk in on the culprit setting up and was killed. Then we should have just stopped there. One for this game. Killing two is pointless. If you get bonus points for killing more, then sure. Otherwise, it leaves more clues behind. Why, Kyo? Why you kill two of our friends? What on earth are you talking about? No. I'm not the culprit. So why is everyone looking at me like I am? Why? Why are they? Why is it? Calm yourself, Correggio. Yes. You mustn't raise your voice. You mustn't stutter. You mustn't lose composure. You mustn't become flustered. You mustn't waver. Look at their horrid faces. 
Nothing to admit. You are simply wrong. I'm not the culprit. So I have nothing to confess. I have nothing to admit. You are simply wrong. Proof that Correcchio is the killer. It ends here. Kyo ah! hit Angie with the same floorboard used in the seesaw trick. <laughs> of dry blood on the underside of the floorboard. And she's blood? <coughs> blood 
that spattered there when the culprit struck Angie with the board. But that's not the only evidence that she was hit with that floorboard. There's also the blood stain under the floor to consider. For that to be there, the floorboard must not have been in place at the time of the attack. Good point. Had the floorboard been in place, her blood wouldn't have splattered beneath it. Kyo's earlier confession is further evidence that the floorboard was used. But how? The weapon used to hit Angie is the floorboard from the seesaw track. It means the culprit knew about the seesaw, so the same person killed Tenko and Angie. setting up the seesaw, he was holding the board when Angie walked in. One more time. Kyo, I want you to confess. No, I will force you to confess.
Let's look back at the first murder. It was late last night. The culprit was in the empty room on the fourth floor. The culprit was preparing the seance murder they had planned. To use the floorboard as a seesaw, they had to cut the cross piece supporting it. The plan was to make the same preparations for all three empty rooms. This would divert suspicion away from the culprit and whoever picked the room. To get the cross pieces, they needed a saw. I imagine they got one from the warehouse. They were planning to cut the cross pieces in all three rooms. However, when the culprit was working on the middle room, the unexpected happened. Angie walked into that room and saw the culprit making their preparations. She needed some fire for the ritual and had gone to the room for a candle. At that point, the culprit had not finished the setup and was just cutting cross pieces. Angie might not have concluded that it was tied to some kind of murder plan. But now that Angie had seen it, the culprit couldn't use the seesaw trick. Any other person might have just given up, but not our culprit. The culprit took the floorboard they loosened struck the unsuspecting Angie in the head. The culprit did not want to give up on their plan and had to improvise. They wrapped duct tape around Angie's injury to stop the bleeding. Then they picked up her unconscious body and carried her to a research lab. While she was unconscious, the culprit hurried to tie up this loose end. But because they were in a hurry, they made a crucial oversight. They didn't notice the duct tape had peeled off and was under Angie's body. Without that evidence, we may never have figured out the culprit's trick. Carrying the supplies they needed, the culprit returned to the ultimate art lab. Locked the front door from inside. took out the katana they brought from their own lab. They then stabbed Angie in the back of the neck, finally killing her. Then, to further confuse us, the culprit attempted to make a locked room mystery. First, they used rope from the warehouse and hung four effigies upside down. There were two reasons for this. To overwhelm the room with an occult atmosphere. And the other was the key to locking the room. The culprit stuck the katana into Kaede's effigy near the rear entrance. and spun the effigy around to twist up the rope. After enough turns, the culprit let go and headed for the rear door.
once released, the effigy began spinning and the gold leaf katana with it. The handle of the katana then hit the sliding lock, locking the door. A difficult trick, but remember that the lock was so loose it moved at the slightest touch. The culprit also would have had the opportunity to attempt it many times. Once complete, the door was locked, but the duct tape was left behind. Perhaps the culprit noticed it, but by that point, it was too late. The room was sealed. There was no way for them to get back inside. Then, this morning, we opened up the room and discovered Angie's body. culprit wasn't finished. They wanted one more murder. To do that, they manipulated us into performing the sales. Of the three empty rooms, the middle one was chosen for the sales. I was invited by Kokichi to take Kibo's place in the sales. Tenko volunteered to be the medium, but she never imagined he would get her killed. To perform the seance, the culprit claimed they needed something for Tenko. A small stone that Himiko had brought from the courtyard. Tenko, at the culprit's request, bowed her head until it was touching the stone. That position was instrumental in making sure the murder went as planned. Next, Kokichi and I placed the iron cage over Tenko in the middle of the magic circle. The culprit then volunteered to drape the white cloth over the iron cage. We didn't realize it at the time, but that was a deliberate decision by the culprit. They needed to set up the murder weapon that was used to kill Tanko. While they were covering the cage with a cloth, they secretly placed the sickle. Finally, four of us placed the wooden statue on top of the cage. Culprit used the weight of the statue to keep the murder weapon in place. <laughs> After the preparations were complete, we began the seance. In complete darkness, we each stood in one corner and sang the Cage Child song. When the song finished, the soul of the dead was supposed to enter the medium. But our culprit had another plan, to commit a murder in the darkness. Right after we started singing, the culprit began making their way toward Tenko. It would have been quite difficult to do in total darkness, but our culprit had a guide. They used the lines of the magic circle drawn with salt. The culprit felt for the salt and used it to guide them along. And when the culprit reached the center of the circle, found the floorboard that had its cross piece cut off the night before. Then lifted up their foot and stomped down hard on the floorboard. The floorboard lifted up like a seesaw. 
and push Tenko's body up toward the ceiling of the cage. Tenko was stabbed in the back of the neck by the sickle on the top of the cage. She was killed right before our eyes, and we didn't even see it. After committing the crime, the culprit followed the salt back to their corner. Finished the ritual and had us light the candles. We followed the culprit's directions and removed the equipment used for the sails. And discovered Tenko's body. While we were all focused on the body, the culprit picked up the sickle and dropped it under the floor through the hole in the corner of the room. Ironically, the final step of the murder was unwittingly carried out by us. The culprit had planned the murder so that we would unintentionally destroy some evidence. That evidence was the magic circle that the culprit used to navigate in the dark. However, the culprit didn't know that Kibo had taken a picture. He really saved us. Without that, we wouldn't know what changes were made to the circle. But now we know for certain, and we know the culprit drew the magic circle. Correct Yoshiguchi, the ultimate anthropologist. You're the culprit behind these murders. That's where my detective work leads us. It all fits. <laughs> My dream to make 100 friends. Oh, it's so unfortunate! I was so close to 100! What are you talking about? I do not understand a word of this. Who gives a fuck? Let's vote for this pooky bastard and be done with this already! Roger that! What voting time!
Wow, seriously, you're correct again. I'm making the third correct verdict in a row. If you manage to get 12 correct verdicts in a row, you'll proceed to the bonus round. How's this gonna last that long? For now. No. I haven't killed. Why did you kill Angie and Denko? Right. Right. No, no matter what motive we oh. he have. Motive? Hey. Did your motive have something to do with the transfer student who was resurrected? Even if it did, though, how did that trigger a murder? Hey, hey. Don't tell me. Shut don't sh shut up! I never said I was scared. <laughs> the resurrection has nothing to do with it. Because we're friends, I'll tell you on that for once believes in the ritual. I would never kill someone such a silly thing as that. So it has nothing to do with the motive? Th then why? Yes. For the one that I loved. There is someone that I love. At the bottom of my heart, someone so dear, someone I longed for. Vowed in endless love to each other, forever bound by fate. None can come between us. We are bound by an intense love. No matter what anyone says. What? Bragging about your perfect love life? Fuck you. Some of us aren't that lucky. So to see this lover, you're. <coughs> I had to escape. <coughs> Why did you need to kill Boat? If you asked if I did to escape the place, my answer would be no. Because I have no need to escape this place. The one I love is inside. Inside? Don't look at me. I'm not his lover. Yeah. Calm down. No one would want a disgusting, shit stuffing bitch like you anyway. But what? what? You. Who is it? Who's this person you love? Hey. Is it really one of us? <laughs> when I say inside, I do not mean inside this academy. I mean inside me. Sister. Yes, the one I love inside lives inside me, my dearest oh. sister. S sister? Wait. <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm not his sister. Right. Well, duh. If you were his sister, he would have killed himself already. Wait. Your sister. But didn't you say she was your lover? Whatever is the matter. It's not that difficult. My sister is my lover. I loved her so deeply. And she loved me so deeply. The fact that we were siblings. Sister's form. The only time I felt at peace was when I was enveloped in my sister's warm. For my beloved That's sister. That's why, for my beloved sister, I had to. Always messing around. You had to escape from her, right? No. No. I had to kill for her. Huh? What? Sister was very sick. She was always in and out of the hospital ever since she was a child. Because of that, she didn't have many friends. She always seemed so lonely. However, even if I could be her, her little brother and her lover, I couldn't be her friend. As I thought I could find her some friends, friends for my d dear huh? deceased his sister. Deceased. My sister is now a ghost. So now her friends 
should be ghosts too, right? For my beloved sister. For the sake of my sister's sake, I've killed many to send her 100. <laughs> they were all wonderful people, worthy of being sisters' friends. Huh? What? Incomprehensible. This is too impossible to understand. Too impossible. Sister. <laughs> sister is very happy. <laughs> yes, Kuroki. I am very happy. Thanks to you, I am not alone. What? Be that the lipstick version of Kyo is. I am Kurekio's older sister. Thank you for looking after my little brother. What? What the hell? Yes. After I lost my beloved sister, I was so distraught I nearly went mad. But sister came to save me. I am pleased. She visited me during one my seances and stayed inside. Sister. I can see her whenever I want. I'm never lonely. That's wonderful, Kyoki. Your love made the impossible possible. Uh, are you serious? Is this really spirit? I told you. It's just delusional. <laughs> what a sad girl who can't even believe in the power of love. <laughs> Either way, he's totally out of his mind. I mean, he killed for a dead chick. You said you killed a lot already, right? So it wasn't just the two you killed here. What was that? What? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like he was already crazy before he got here. Because? You didn't kill to escape from here. That wasn't your purpose from the get-go. <laughs> you wanted to slaughter a bunch, huh? <laughs> Unacceptable. Do not make me out of some bloodthirsty and criminal killer. I only kill girls who think, who I think are worthy of being sisters' friends. Huh? Only girls? I see. So when we were deciding on who should be on the, be the medium, let's hit, choose a spiritual medium, which would be best, work best with a girl. Uh, um... You said it would work best with a girl. Uh... I spent my time evaluating all the girls here. Wonderful. And besides Maki and Mew, they were all worthy. All worthy of being sisters' friends. Yeah. All worthy? Why you? Hey, how come I'm not included? I mean, not like I care. Then, then the second victim could have been me? Uh, Tanko died in place of me? Then I'll do it. And you should go in. Excellent. It would have been great, but Tenko volunteered made me so happy. Her noble, earnest heart made her a perfect friend for sister. Wonderful. She even infiltrated the student council to protect Himiko. Infiltrate? Really? But... But how did you... It was obvious to me. I have studied many people. Uh, yes, she stood up against the darkness of the school all by herself. All for her beloved friend. Beautiful. I was so touched by that wonderful. She was per a perfect friend for sister. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand why you didn't like her, Himiko. Though well, I was planning on having you become sister's friend too, eventually. <laughs> you did all this for wow, you did this all just for to kill for you to go that far? That's pretty impressive. You're, you're interested in the cage tile just so you could use it to kill someone, right? Let's see. It interests me as an anthropologist, of course, but more than that. For my beloved I sister. want to kill for sister. I cannot deny overwhelming feelings. Hey Joe, are you okay? You look kind of pale. So don't worry about it. Let's focus on Keo right now. I knew I would have plenty of chances after escaping this place, but Anne, she walked up to me preparing, and I ended up killing her a different way. So I figured I might as well kill. After all, it would have been a shame just to waste the sound trick I prepared. What is that? 
you're talking like you killed her just because you could. Not just because I could. I was sending another friend to sister. Oh, yeah. You're such a thoughtful little brother, but it was bad to get greedy. Oh, you're right, because of that, now I can't send a hundred friends to sister. <laughs> Do you understand now? Those were the circumstances for Kyokuro's crime. <laughs> I do not understand. This is all too impossible for me to understand. Why? That right, killing two friends for your dead sister. But how? That's wrong. That's so wrong. <laughs> oh, don't get so worked up. There's something I learned after sister's death. Death only changes a person's form. The soul lives on as a ghost. That's right. Even though I am a ghost now, I am always by Kirigiro's side. Sister. Thank you, sister. I love you. <laughs> Cut it out already. What was I don't that? understand anything you're saying. Nothing's making sense. It's not fair. Why didn't Angie and Tenko have to die for something so unfair? Well. Because death is unfair. All deaths are unfair deaths. Why do you think news stations get such high ratings when they're reporting about death? <laughs> because everyone likes unfair deaths. Maybe. Well, if you look at it like that, this whole killing game embodies their, that philosophy, right? Gifted high school dudes forced to play a killing game. <laughs> Man, if people were watching this, they would get a kick out of it. People were watching this? Yeah. Knock off the bullshit. Only sick fucks would enjoy watching this. You got me. Hell yeah, if I, I was in this killing game, I would have so much fun watching. So the nature of this killing game is yet shrouded in mystery. But my role in it is over. I have finished my explanation to you, friends. Sister. I think I shall go and see her now, my beloved sister. I was unable to send her 100 friends, but at least I can see her again now. Correcio. That's alright, sweet Kurogiro. Come to me. Oh. Looks like you've already prepared. Here, well then, let's get. Punishment time! Huh? Punishment time? Sister. Beloved sister, as long as it's finally. Be Finally get to see you again. Right. Now on, no one will try to stop. We can be together without having to hide our love for each other. Oh, wait, I can't accept there. this. Like I said, there's no such thing as a death that can be accepted. From an anthropological point of view. Why do you think so many different cultures have funeral rites? Why do you think rumors of ways to resurrect the dead never cease? The living must find a reason, however, to force to accept death when it happens. <laughs> How do you come with terms of death after determining how you live? Yes. What was that? W what? Uh, that was the answer I reached. How about you? How would you live a life that faces death? I prepared a very special punishment. For the ultimate anthropologist here, sir. Watch over you, Paula, as a ghost. As your friend, I will watch over you. That's right. It won't be just me, Kurogiro. All of those who died will be watching. Watching to see how you face the death of your friends. Humanity is Be watching forever and ever. It's punishment time!
what? No, Mata Dum, why? <laughs> what did you think my cute child would commit suicide? Oh, it's so cute. It's so freaking cute that he would kill himself because he d couldn't get along. <laughs> Mata Dum commit suicide? Had I known this would happen, I would have been nicer to the only reason Monodum obsessed over getting along with because everyone but me bullied him. Because the other Monocubs drove him to suicide, but not me. Oh, who's Monodum? You already forgot? That's kind of scary. Looks like the other class trial is wrapped up without incident, so I'm going to take back this Necronomicon. Seems like a waste, though. You guys sure don't want to use it. You guys should have brought brought someone back to life and add them to your roster. Shut up, how long are you going to keep talking about that? Ignore him. The whole resurrection ritual was obviously a lot. He was trying to shake us mentally to get us to pay. I'm assuming you th think other murders will happen if you do that right. Who can say? What a waste. If none of you were going to use it, you should have let, let me have it. Then I could have resurrected one of my dead siblings. Which one? Uh, I don't know. They were all pretty terrible, actually. Wait, did, did one of us die? I could have sworn it would have been just the two of us this whole time. It's too bad you missed your chance to raise the dead. That's what you get for doubting me. Too bad. Even now, he still talks about raising the dead. This is stupid. What people believe is up to them, but living, living people shouldn't have to suffer because of the dead. Living are more pr precious than the dead, no matter what. That's not that's something a coward like you would say. Shut up. Leave me alone. There's one thing that this cave's taught me. I thought there was a god watching over us, but there isn't after all. Not in this academy. Yeah, you're right. Well, that's why we had to work together, right? Face it. Our ultimate talents are the best weapons we have. Then going to do his best to keep everyone safe. Going to want to protect everyone. But your talent is entomology. I don't want Shuichi to use his ultimate talent anymore. I'm getting sick of Clash. Right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> your talent is an assassin. It's way more trouble than... When are you going to use that, huh? Okay. I'll work hard until everyone trusts my ultimate talent. That's <laughs> It may not be possible or not, but I put in the effort so, so everyone can trust me. So don't, I won't run away anymore. I want to survive and escape this place with everyone. Lucky. <laughs> I see. I wonder how long that's going to last. What if you, your true calling is a killer show? I don't underestimate her. Maki rolls one of my best psychics. I don't remember being your psychic. Also, didn't I tell you to stop calling me Maki roll? Oh, you guys are so close now. That must be the powerful bond of friendship. But I would have preferred if it happened soon, especially not after losing seven people. You're right, only nine people left. <laughs> oh, what do you know, the dumbass can do basic math. That's right, seven pieces of shit have been flushed away and only nine remain. Excellent. Doesn't that m mean one of, of the pe make you one of the pieces? Just nine of us. Humans are like weeds, too numerous to count. Seven of us as dead doesn't mean that to that's totally what the heartless robot is thinking, right? Right? No, I'm not thinking that. Your blanded robophobia is simply inexcusable. But, you know. but hey, none of us gave up, right? We're gonna escape, but I'm not gonna rely on a god, spirit, or the dead. Just you guys. I believe in all okay. of you. Kaito. Well, of course. All right, those of us who remain can start over. Hey. Hold on, Keyboy needs to apologize to everyone for the whole student council thing. And there's only one kind of apology that I'm willing to accept. How exciting! Yank your head off and smash it onto the ground with all your strength. Got the no way. I never heard of such an intense form of an apology. Seems like everyone is settled for now, even though we're missing her. You all right? Go, you're okay. Anything Gonta can do to help, you can tell Gonta. I think we should let her have some space for now. 
That might be best for him. Okay. I remember how I felt. Going to understand. You're so dumb. God, Himko is such a liar. Huh? Because I'm a Personally, liar. I don't think lies are exactly a bad thing. Let's face it, you wouldn't have any free will in the world if you comprised with just the truth. But, but even then, I don't think it's good to lie to yourself, you know. Right? What are you saying? Think about Himiko's feelings a little bit. Uh -huh. I only say that because I thought about it. Because? Himiko has been lying to herself about her own feelings, so she's been holding back. Hey, why are you repressing? Why are you trying so hard to hold back? 